Hello everybody. Today we're going to check out PowerShell error handling because you will get PowerShell errors. In fact, you probably already have had PowerShell errors. We're going to check out how PowerShell actually works with those errors, what we can do to better analyze them, and also what we can do to handle those errors in our code with try catch finally blocks. So we can produce outputs that make sense to our users and outputs that make sense to us and be able to see exactly how to continue with our code should we start to get terminating or non-terminating errors. So without further ado, let's get straight into error handling within PowerShell and try catch finally blocks within PowerShell. Okay, so here I am inside my VS Code environment and I'm going to produce an error. In fact, I'm going to produce the simplest error I can think of, which is this, one over zero, or more to the point, we are doing a divide by zero. Now that's going to cause all sorts of interesting problems, but if I go and press F5 on my keyboard and run this, you'll see I get an error called attempted to divide by zero in red, very good. Now. This error is actually stored within PowerShell. There is a default variable. In fact, there are a number of default variables in PowerShell, but there is a default PowerShell error variable called $error. Now, if I look inside my shell here and I run that $error variable, you'll notice the output here is that same error. It's no longer actually colored in red, but it's actually the same error that we just got. We can produce a couple more errors. So say for example, if I did an error like get dash service and get service name uh, and a get service name of Apple. Now I don't have a service called Apple. If I highlight that code and press F8 to run it, what you will see is I cannot find any service with name Apple. So I've now had two errors. I've had the error for divide by zero and the error for a service not existing. Now, these have both actually gone into that dollar error variable down here. And the thing about this dollar error variable is this dollar error variable is not just going to contain a single error. It's going to contain every error that's happened in this current session. So if we look at my terminal now, notice I've actually got this divide by zero error. And I've also got this other error called cannot find any service name in Apple. So what that means is, if you remember back to us talking about arrays, we can go and select the first element in this array. If we choose error, dollar error, and then use square brackets, zero, and run this, you will always get the most recent error that has actually been returned. If I go and have a look at error one, that is the previous error, of divide by zero. So this is actually a stack of errors that's coming in. So any errors that we actually get inside our code are always going to be passed to this error variable that we can check out and output later on should we want to. So what I can also do here is I can count the amount of errors I've recently had. I could even use dollar error dot count here. So dollar error dot count and go and run that code and you can see I've got three errors that are actually inside here. Now you can also clear these things down as well. So we can do dollar error dot clear and do that with two brackets. We've now cleared out our dollar error variable and we can go and have a look at dollar error again. And you'll notice I've got no errors actually included inside there. So what happens if I want to handle these errors? Because if we go and run divide by zero again, for example, one over zero, we might not want to see something like this. We might want to see something a little more sensical. The same thing with this get service. If, we go, if I go and run this get service again, notice it does say get service cannot find any service with name Apple. The problem that I find with PowerShell is that when people, and especially uh, IT people that are not experienced with scripting, see PowerShell errors, they see this big block of red and their eyes just glaze over. They just ignore it. They just go, oh, error, broken. It doesn't work. People don't tend to read what is in front of their face. So we can see here, this does say cannot find any service with the name Apple. It does kind of make sense to us, but we might want to make that look a little bit different. We might want to change the output of this error. Now we can kind of do that by catching the error and then deciding what we're actually going to do with it. So let's go check out something called a try catch finally statement. 
So this is something called a try catch finally block. It's a concept that you find in a lot of different programming languages. Essentially you want to take those errors and handle them in very specific ways. So in this case we have our code written in three different components, a try, a catch and a finally block down here. So a try catch or try uh, block here is where we run our actual code. This could be in this case divide by zero or this could be the code that I had previously which was get service name apple. It could be something extremely complicated. It could be a collection of functions. It could be a massive block of code down here. It doesn't actually particularly matter. But what we want to do is we want to actually go and catch this error itself. So by using this catch block this is going to catch any error outputs and display this instead. So in this case we're going to write host an error has occurred. Now we could change this around a bit. So for example I could do something like foreground color and we could do something like cyan down here and we could do background color and do something like white. By doing this, our error is going to look very different to what it normally does in red, and it's going to mean that people are more likely to actually read what's on the screen. Our finally block will actually always run. So sometimes we can run some code that is not actually going to produce an error, and then the finally block will still run after this. So for example, let's go and comment out this code for a moment, and let's go run some code that actually will work. So let's do five plus seven, and we'll go and run that code right now. And we can see that try block has completed, 5 plus 7, and the output for that is 12, and the finally block has initiated. We initiated this option that just says write host clean up. Now, the central piece here, this catch block hasn't run, but if we go and produce something that does make an error, like for example that 1 slash 0, run exactly the same code, look, I've got an error has occurred, because it's written my error has occurred with a foreground color of cyan and a background color of white. So this might actually get people to look at it a bit more. Maybe we change the background color to yellow. Go and run that again, and now we've got an even odder looking block of text down there that people are more likely to actually read. Let's have a look at a little bit more of a complex example here. We've got another try catch finally block, but what you'll see here is first of all, I don't actually have the finally. You don't need the finally, it's completely optional inside here. I do inside my try block though here, I have a function that I've written called get directory count. Very, very basic function. All this is actually going to do is going to get a directory that you actually pass as a parameter, and it's going to count the amount of directories in that directory, the amount of folders in that directory, and output that for us. We're then going to call that function down here and call it with the directory of C colon and see what we've got. So if I run that, I should get an output that says there are seven folders within this folder because it has run successfully. Let's go and change that directory output not to C, let's change that to X, and there is not an X on this computer. Now, if I go and run this, I'm actually going to get two elements in this catch. Uh, the first one is actually my write host here, directory does not exist, and then the other one is write host dollar underscore dot exception dot message foreground color red. Now if you put a dollar underscore or a dollar ps item, it doesn't matter which one, both of those mean exactly the same thing, into your catch block, this is actually going to reference the error variable. This is going to reference actually what has passed out of this try block down here. And I'm going to look at the exception.message, so just the message component of that error to try and simplify things a little for us. So if we go and run this now, you can see I've actually got both of those outputs, a directory does not exist, and I've also got a parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter name directory. And it doesn't have the extra components around that error. So it having one error and just one line people are much more likely to read that error and actually make sense of that error rather than just have their eyes glaze over and not read what's in front of the screen so here we have another example uh, on our try catches and in this example we have a system.net web client which is actually going to attempt to download a file but what we're going to do is instead of catching every single error we are going to catch a very specific error these are .NET exceptions if our commandlet here within the try block actually throws a .NET exception within system.net web exception or system.io.io exception it will write out that Final, that finally catch. Uh, sorry, 
it will write out that catch block. On the other hand, if it doesn't match this specific thing, it will actually write out a generic error down the bottom here, an error occurred that cannot be resolved. I'm sure we've already had errors come up that says an unknown error has occurred. The reason why an unknown error has occurred is because the programmer has not put error handling in for that specific type of error and is attempting to throw a generic error. Now, interestingly, if we go and run this now, you'll notice that the output I actually get is unable to download my doc 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 from contoso.com because we have not matched this specific error output for system.net web exception. We can also actually throw our own errors very quickly and easily in PowerShell 2. We can actually do that just with the throw command. If we throw fail, or actually we will throw failure, what actually comes back here is an error that contains that word failure. So this actually logs as an error, but we have manually thrown it ourselves. What that means is we can have multiple catch statements for the same try block. So clear that down. Let's check out this try catch four. Look at this block of code, slightly different. Zoom in a little bit to it. What we have is we have a catch block here on a try block at the top. So dollar a is equal to one. And we're going to try if dollar a is equal to one, throw one. Well, it is equal to one. So it's going to throw an error for us automatically. And that error is just going to contain one. That's all. So just look again, if I run only that line, we have throw one is actually throwing an error of one. That's the output. Our catch is going to catch this. So if we're catching with an if block in here, if the error, remember the pipeline contains the error, contains exception dot message is equal to one, then throw error one. Else, just throw the message itself. Let's go run that code. And now we notice we've got error one. So we have caught our own specific errors. Now, what about if we change this around? Let's do if dollar a is equal to one, throw one, and let's do something else. Let's do else if, and let's do dollar a is equal to two. And then we'll run an else if thing in here, and we'll do another throw. Let's take those auto predicted comments out. Let's throw. Two. And now if I go and grab this catch block down here, we change this around. So if the dollar exception error message equal to one, throw error one, else throw an exception message. Maybe what we want to do here is drop in not a catch just for that. We can just drop a catch block in here and put another else if, else if that dollar exception message is not equal to one, that dollar ex exception message is equal to two, we want to throw we want to print error two and go and run that. In this sense, we can see we've got error one. If I go and change A to two on here, go and run that same code again, we should get error two on the output. So what we're doing here is we're actually handling two different types of errors. Now, if we're handling many, many errors, we might not want to use if statements. We might want to actually use switch cases instead, as that would be more efficient than churning through lots and lots of else, else ifs uh, down there to find the right error. We could also still include a finally block on that if we really want to. So we can do finally, just write a finally block in the end, write dash host, code is done. Do a little foreground color of cyan on there and go and run that process. There we go, code is done and we have error two. So this is a very brief overview of error handling within PowerShell. Now there is one more thing to cover here and these are error types or more to the point, terminating errors. Okay, so we're going to top this off by looking at a final component here. We're going to look at different error types. So let's check out this try catch finally block. It looks very simple. We have a single thing here that says get content non-existent file. Once that errors out because non-existent file doesn't exist, catch and write computer says no. And then also put a finally block on the end that says write host completed. Now let's go run that and see what happens. We should catch the error or not. Now notice the error here is actually displaying as normal. It's not being caught by the catch block. Why is that? 
because of the type of error that we've actually got down here. Now, if we go and look at the error action types, we've actually got a number of different error action types here within PowerShell. We've got things like silently continue. This value causes PowerShell to suppress all error messages and continue with the script execution. We've got stop errors. This value causes PowerShell to treat non-terminating errors as terminating errors, a stop error. That's the kind of error that the catch block captures. If it's not a stop error, it won't catch it. Continue. This value is the default setting, displays the error message to the console, but the script execution continues. And inquire, the value prompts the user to choose whether to continue or stop or suspend. This value behaves similarly to inquire, but instead of prompting the user, it suspends the execution and waits for user input. So if I go back to my error action over here, what I actually want to do is I want to change this get content over here to have on it a new error action. If I put dash error action on the end, I have the ability here to choose whether I want continue, ignore, inquire, silently continue, stop or suspend. So if I change this error output type to stop and go and run the code again, now you should be able to see computer says no. Wonderful. But what about if I don't want to do that for every single command I run, because this is a parameter on that command. Also, if this is a badly written command line, you might not find that parameter available to you to change the error action type. You can change this in a global variable if you really want to across the entire script. So instead of putting an error action type stop there, what I could actually do within this try block is define a new variable called error action preference. Now it has to be called error action preference and notice the color has changed slightly differently to a normal variable inside my VS code. And I'm going to put the error action preference as stop. That will do the same thing, but it will set every single error that outputs within this block of code to a stop. So if I go and run that now, we've still got computer says no. If I change this error action preference to continue, and run that again, you'll find that that error is actually displayed because the catch block isn't being engaged. So remember, the catch blocks only actually engage if they catch a stop error, not a continue or silently continue error down here. And that kind of completes this component for looking at a little bit about PowerShell errors and try catch finally blocks. I hope you will find this useful in your own code and I hope you'll join me next time for more on learning PowerShell. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.